everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to Five Fact Friday. I have a lot of really awesome questions from you guys, from Twitter and Tumblr, and I am excited to get right into it. First of all, I want to say I tried to make this announcement last two weeks ago on Five Fact Friday, but I filmed outside so there was kind of a glare on the screen, so I ended up taking it out of the video. So here I am again. I just wanted to talk about the Amino app. Some of you guys know that I am on Tattoo Amino, and I told you guys it would be a great way to follow me if you want more very specific tattoo content from me. Because, you know, sometimes I feel bad talking about tattoos all the time on here because some of you guys are like, uh, I found you for other reasons and now you're talking about tattoos all the time. So I'm on this Tattoo Amino app and you can download that by searching Tattoo Amino, but other than just tattoo stuff, if you want to be able to have a couple little things, they have just like a hub, a main Amino hub, and I got a question last week, are you still playing Pokemon Go? So on here, I am following a couple different Aminos, and it's cool to just have like these forums on here, so I have Tattoo, um, Sailor Moon, of course, which is crucial for me because I've been working on a Sailor Moon cosplay, Pokemon Go, and then I have a fashion and a vegan. You can find me on here if you want to. I know a ton of people found me on the Tattoo Amino app, and I mean, I'm, it's not popping off for me as much on my other apps, but that's cool. Sometimes I don't like want to be quicken. I just want to like observe. Well, that's what quicken means, but I'll leave a link down below. Um, for the app and the different aminos that I am also in but there are plenty more and I think it's actually really cool that like you don't have to have just the one app um, and then you can hit explore and you can find a ton of different ones um, tennis swim piano oh there's a punk rock amino click and then you would just click join community and it it puts you in there. Oh my god. Um, how do you like Amino? I love it. Thanks. Jumping into Tattoo Talk. Jumping into Five Bag Friday. My goodness. <laughs> I have been trying to make more hair tutorials. I am I feel very qualified to make like hair tutorials and stuff like that, but they require a lot of time and editing, so sometimes I have to skip Five Fact Friday in order to accomplish them. But I like doing it, I don't know, it's a cool exercise for my channel. I really love being able to do a wide variety of things, and I feel so grateful that I have you guys who are interested in that wide variety. Like, it's really cool, it's really cool that you guys come from different places. Because there's so many times where I'll post a hair tutorial, hair tutorial, and a guy will comment and be like, Why am I watching this? And it's like, you can watch it if you want to. No, you can just, and, I don't know. So, Five Pack Friday. You accidentally said your real name in your previous video. I just wanted to let you know in case you were keeping your identity a secret. Thank you for that. You guys are always the best, and you pick up on everything. Um, my real name is Amanda, and I definitely don't conceal that, but honestly, um, Quicken has been my handle for so many years. I have a video, it's kind of old, so you know I'm talking a long time. I have a video talking about like what Quicken means, where it came from, where it originated, my Tumblr, my Zanga, all of that if you want to know more about what Quicken stands for. I am Quicken though, and Amanda is like my real name, but I prefer Quicken as like a channel name and like an entity and a person and it's not that it's like my alter ego and it's not like my, I don't know, like my innermost desires, but I do like going by Quicken and I call myself Quicken and if you see me on the street, you can call me whatever you want, um, like, I, that is nice, I don't know. I don't want to set myself up for that. Hey, asshole. But, yeah, I, I normally refer to myself as Quicken on here and on the internet. And that is like my internet handle. Sid, burn, crash, override. Quicken is my internet handle, and that's what I go by when I'm on the internet. 
just as some of you guys have screen names and usernames that mean something to you and that are your internet presence, Quicken has always been mine. My Instagram is named Quiet Cool Kid. Um, just because when I first made it, Instagram wouldn't let me do um, five characters, so it was QQCKND. And then I didn't really like that, so I just changed it to Quiet Cool Kid, which is what Quicken stands for. Quiet Cool Kid, no doubt. I don't mind if you guys call me Amanda, you totally can. A lot of people do. That's my real name. And 26 is my real age. And I know I was like calling myself old in my previous video. And I do that in jest, like don't feel like you're an old person if you're older than me. I say that just because I feel like I, and maybe you guys can relate, have been put in this age bracket where I can remember floppy disks and the Oregon Trail and the creation of Facebook and before iPhones. So I feel like I can really date myself and at the same time like completely operate a computer and understand a program just by sitting in front of it and fucking going to town. So I like I'm on the cusp of both of those worlds. Like, I can have a conversation with somebody and be like, Hey, do you remember MTV Undressed? And then someone else can be like, Oh, I love Catfish. And I'm like, What did you say, young man? So, I, I don't know. So that's why I call myself old as a gesture to kind of just like criticize, not criticize, but like satirically talk about my generation people call like 90s kids like the lost generation because we can remember playing outside and stuff like that and before like really extreme gaming like I don't know if I've said this in a video before like but one kid in my neighborhood had a Nintendo 64 which was a cartridge console <laughs> grandma so I can kind of remember that. Now it's a standard. Both of my younger brothers each have their own console and like people tell me like they have to because they each have their own game and username and stuff like that and they have to have their own console and I'm just like, what? Oh my god. But I also never like criticize millennials like um, a lot of people like even at the salon if they come in and they don't have a babysitter and they have their kid they hand their kid their phone and they're like here fucking look at the phone. And I don't ever criticize that behavior because I had a Game Boy that I played Pokemon with and I remember being like, Mom, leave me in the car, I'm gonna play Pokemon. So, like, it's just different. But I age myself just to, like, make fun of that or I don't bring comfort to myself because I constantly feel weird because my brother is 20 years old and he never ever had to, like, pay 50 cents for a floppy disk and, like, create, I, I don't know, like, sign in to borrow a computer at school to, like, do a project. Now everyone does that at home and they save it to clouds and the clouds are in the sky and they fucking, the professor has it. Crazy. So that's me. I, I mean, I just got an iPhone really recently, but still. So someone asked me how I feel about YouTube drama. And I've had this question like two or three times in the last like two weeks, so I assume something heated is going on in YouTube world, but I don't know. I like, I don't really relate to a lot of other YouTubers, and I get a ton of criticism on my channel that my videos are too long. And here's why. I really like long videos. I don't have cable. I don't have a TV. I go on the computer to watch content and yes a lot of my like YouTube time like if this is a graph like the better I do on YouTube the less time I can watch YouTubers but I like to get up in the morning answer emails and stuff and then I sit at my computer and I kind of like wake up drink my coffee and I like to watch YouTube videos and I really cannot watch these videos that are 2 minutes and 45 seconds and they're like an entire makeup look or an entire product review or like an entire updo like 
YouTube told me that, like, making shorter videos brings, like, holds your audience's attention better. And I guess I get that. Like, everybody says that. Like, s shorter videos will hold your audience attention better. And people will say, like, you're just trying to trick the algorithm by having a long video. And it's not true. That's not, like, how that works. Like, I just, like, believe in you guys and I trust you guys. And if you have a short attention span, like, I'm really sorry that it's might be difficult to watch my videos. Some people have said, I watch her videos and fast forward. And I'm like, okay, if that works for you. But I just believe that you guys can watch and value longer content without needing to be like, what the fuck? Like my hair tutorial was six minutes long. People were like, that's too long. And I'm like, okay, but I benefit from watching videos where people are like, talk through it and aren't just like, put the hair up, spray it, done, watch the finished product longer than the tutorial. Like it's really difficult for me. And I just give you guys more credit than to be so distracted that you can't watch like a 12 minute, a 15 minute video. Tattoo Talk Tuesday is a talk show. And I like to include a lot of variety in it. Like sometimes I make shorter videos or I make videos where I'm not necessarily in front of the camera. And all of that is just an exercise for my channel. And it's fun to create different style videos where I'm not in front of this background all the time. Cause even I get sick of it. It's why I film outside. I like to change things up too and change the style of videos. But at the end of the day, I like longer videos and it's what I gravitate towards. And I promise you guys, it is not easier for me to make these long videos cause obviously I have to sit through them to edit them. And if I post a 20 minute video, just know that it was a lot longer than 20 minutes and I had to sit for a lot longer than 20 minutes to edit it. So what was I talking about? YouTube drama. I guess. So I kind of stay out of YouTube drama. I don't know anything about it. If it's like celebrities or YouTube celebrities like fighting with each other or the drama. I also really do not like like instigating YouTubers who like just have YouTube channels to like document YouTube drama and to like pull up receipts and keep it real like I'm like not really into that I, I, I don't know like I really don't like cyberbullying I really don't like defamation of character blah, blah, blah. so like I don't really like that stuff and I don't know if you guys do too I assume you guys come here for a very special reason in your heart but I'm just like not into that I think you know, if there's a YouTube out there and they start doing things that you don't like, just don't watch it anymore. And if someone has apologized, then you can decide if you value that apology or if you don't. This is a drama-free channel, can't say it enough. I moderate all the comments and I moderate the users and I moderate my own language so I can provide an atmosphere that is drama free. I do that because I get really distracted and turned off by other YouTube channels where the comments are like buck wild and offensive and hurtful. I think on a lot of my videos like as like as more and more of my time is used up in the world I can look on my comment section and see that you guys like talk to each other which is really great so I want to you to guys to always know that my comments are a safe place for you and that if you wanted to ask like an honest question no one is going to criticize you or call you names or call you stupid and at the same time if there's evil in your heart and you come onto my channel, I just want you to know that this isn't a place for you and that if you need to criticize me or anything that I represent, that that has to be done somewhere else, like nowhere, like stop being an internet troll, like I don't get it. And I don't know, I'm an advocate 
like, a lazy advocate for some sort of, like, internet reform where, like, if you say something toxic on Twitter to somebody, that your IP address should just be blocked and you shouldn't be allowed to have a Twitter for, I don't know, six months, six weeks, whatever. And I just, I don't know. They'll, they'll delete your entire Instagram if you show too much cleavage, but you can go on, I don't know, any old, you, you can go on Graveyard Girl's Instagram and just trash talk, da 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 da, -da everybody up the list, and nothing bad will happen to you. I don't get it. So, I hope on the internet one day there will be some sort of policing of that. But then freedom of speech and all that, and who knows. They say that you have to see a toxic world to understand where you lie. And you need to see someone acting in a far out way to know what's wrong and what's right and where you how want to act on that spectrum. And I totally get that. So, I don't know. I just, I don't want you guys to be hurt. I don't personally want to be hurt, so... I do not participate in the YouTube drama because it's frightening to me and I don't want to end up on somebody's drama newscast channel where they have 10 videos and the only video that has a ton of views is the one where they're talking trash. I don't know. Don't want to be a part of it. I want to make genuine content that people enjoy. And if people enjoy tabloids and pulling receipts and all that stuff, I'm just not into it. <laughs> anyway, I don't know what I was talking about. So, YouTube drama in general, or YouTube drama on my own channel? I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, I'm just not into it. I don't, I don't know. I also like, I don't like tabloids and stuff like that, and how the news portrays people and I don't know like leave Angelina Jolie alone how would you describe your fashion sense and where do you draw inspiration for your outfits I get this question a lot and for I, I really want to wholeheartedly answer it because I'm tired of like brushing it off I feel really bad for you guys who are like listening and then I'm just like I shop at Old Navy and people are like but I went there and I didn't see the outfit you're wearing. I think my my current, very current, because this is not a timeline of Amanda's fashion, Amanda, but it could be, do you want that video? My very, very current attire draws inspiration from a previous me because we're always so scared of changing because someone will call us out. You've changed. So I can always be like, I've had this flannel for 20 years. So my current inspiration always draws, my current fashion always draws inspiration from a previous me, which is very punk roots, band inspired, like I was emo, even now, sad girl, always like that. For like two years ago, I would only dress like Morrissey, so I, I try to flavor some of that into my outfits as well. I want to remain minimalistic, so I like pieces that are multifunctional, and by that I mean they can go from casual to relaxed, sporty, and then kind of dressed up. I never dress really, really up, and although I want to, um, John and I don't really go on dates, don't go anywhere fancy. I had a few dresses for Joanna Newsom tour and that was like as high fashion as I really get, as like dressed up as I really get. So I don't have a ton of like really dressy pieces, mostly punk inspired. And I also dress to fit my body type. I have a big, a, a, low, a bigger lower half and a tiny smaller half. Small boobs, big butt, but I don't, I don't really dress sexy or dress to like flatter my figure because I think all that shit is fucking made up. Stop calling me pear shaped. I'm not a fruit. I just, this is what I look like and I don't work out that often. So this is what I got. So I wear a lot of high waisted pieces. It kind of tricks my shape 
into only showing the like top half that is slim and then it cuts my waist and makes my legs look longer which they're really not I'm 5'4 maybe 5'5 five five. I don't ever wear heels I wear a ton of high-waisted pieces I will literally shop anywhere for high-waisted stuff and it's kind of hard because only recently has it really become a trend I've probably dressed like this since I was 19 and in the beginning it was a lot of thrift store inspired stuff and now it's a little more mainstream thank god so I can buy stuff on sale man I talk a lot final thing are you an affectionate person are you more cold do you hug and kiss and stuff a lot so I feel like I have to warm up to people and it takes me a little while um I've definitely gotten in trouble before. I'm definitely like a touch, a toucher, but touching in a way that just like extends comfort and not like someone's crying and I'm like, oh. <laughs> but like if I'm with my coworkers or if I'm with a friend, I might squeeze their arm or like touch their shoulder or like hit their back, something like that. Um, I have a video about how I was like fired from my old job um, because like a girl started working there for free so why would they keep me on staff if someone's gonna work for free I'll try and link that video unless you guys know what it is so I used to work somewhere and I had touched my co-worker in a way where I usually do like a little squeeze of the shoulder if I'm walking by I don't always have something to say a little squeeze of the shoulder and she told my boss that I wiped my hands on her and that my hands were dirty and I wiped my hands on her. And I was like, no, um, I don't know how to describe that like affectionate touch I give, but it was just given one of those. Later I was fired, but um, it takes me a little while to do that. I do get a little affectionate like that. I'm not like a huge hugger to um, like strangers. I definitely don't really hug hello unless I'm like so overwhelmed to like if I haven't seen somebody for a long time or if I'm just feeling like very swelled with affection someone has done a huge favor for me or has really extended themselves to me and I'm feeling like so grateful that it has turned physical like definitely that but um I don't know, I'm just like really awkward. So if someone puts their arm around me, I'm kind of just like, what do I do? I would say definitely like not affectionate towards strangers and not affectionate all the time. Definitely like, it has to come from my heart, but it is there. Um, I think everyone who's ever approached me like, you're quicken, I watch your videos, I read your Tumblr. I've always been like, give me a kiss, but, um, I don't know, that's, as, that's super genuine and heartfelt anyway, so that's definitely why that happens. The camera literally has no memory left at all, so cutting it down, cutting it here, not short, very long. I love you guys so much, like and subscribe if you're into it, I have a get ready with me video coming up and lots of other stuff. Request what you want. I'm into it. I'm always I'm always into challenges and exercising the channel. And I love you guys so so much. So much. Give this video a thumbs up. Just do it, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what that does. I don't tricking the algorithm. <laughs> I love you guys and until next week. Bye. Hey everybody, it is Quicken and welcome back to Five Back Friday. We're in my backyard, which is the very first location the very first Five Fact Friday.